adding and subtracting, in which case nothing changes. You can just combine them if they have the same exponents, same variables. We did multiplying, where you do what with your exponents? You add them. When you have power to a power, so an exponent raised to another exponent, that's when you do what, Vinny? That's when you multiply them. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do division. So with division, like here I have 3 to the 4th divided by 3 squared. Again, if I were to write it out, 3 to the 4th means that I have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. And the bottom 3 squared means I would have 3 times 3. So you could cancel then one from the top with one from the bottom. So two from the top get taken away with two from the bottom. So we end up with 3 squared, which is 9. Same thing happens with your x's. So like x to the fifth means that I have 5x's. Divided by x squared means that I have two of them down there. So again, 1 with 1, we get left with x cubed. So as somebody already said, if you're dividing and you have the same base, you're going to subtract your exponents. So like here, if I have 4 to the 7th divided by 4 to the 5th, I've got to do 4 to the 7 minus 5. I'm subtracting those exponents. So that would give me 4 squared, which would end up being 16. So in my other example there, x to the a divided by x to the b, you would subtract top minus bottom, so you would get x to the a minus b. And then there's nothing else you can do with that. You can't combine an a and a b. They're not like terms. So it's just x to the a minus b power for that. And then any division problems where you have coefficients also, you want to divide the coefficients. So in my example over here, negative 30 divided by 2 would give us negative 15. Actually, divide those numbers out in front. And then you're going to keep your bases and subtract your exponents. So x to the 6th divided by x to the 4th gives us x to the negative 2nd. So negative 15x squared. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So let's take a look at our first example. a squared b cubed divided by ab. You have to remember ab down in the denominator, they both have an exponent of 1. The 1s aren't always written, but they are there. So a squared divided by a to the first, 2 minus 1 would give us a to the first, but we don't have to write that exponent of 1. b cubed divided by b to the first would give us b to the second, because 3 minus 1 gives us 2. Uh, that's our final answer. That's it. Over for number 2, we got some coefficients there, so let's divide them. 20 divided by 4. And then we got 5 minus 2 for our x's gives us x to the third. And then 4 minus 6 for our y's gives us y to the Negative 2. Now we can't leave that as negative 2, so where does our y have to move? To the, to the bottom. So we get 5x to the third over y squared. So that's the other thing that'll happen sometimes with your division. You'll end up with a negative exponent, so you just got to remember to move it so it's positive. You can never have negatives. Third one. 26 divided by negative 13, negative 2. And then I have x squared divided by x squared. What do you think would happen with our x's? They cancel each other out entirely, so I don't have any x anymore. And then y cubed is not divided by anything, so that's just going to say is y cubed. And then z to the fourth divided by z squared and give us z squared. Why do they use a as a variable? It looks like 9. They just did. 
Why do they use a T? It looks like a plus sign. Why do they use an S? It looks like a five. You can go with almost every letter. All right. So number four, we got 2k to the third divided by 3k to the negative two, but then that's all raised to the second power. So what do you think we should do first? Distribute that exponent through the parentheses. So we would get two squared, k to the sixth in our numerator. We've got to multiply that three and that two over 3 squared k to the negative 4. All right, so what is 2 squared? 4. 3 squared? 9. Can we actually divide 4 by 9? No. Can we reduce that in any way? No. So that's going to stay as 4 over 9. So then for our k's following our division rules, we have 6 minus negative 4. Yeah. So that becomes k to the 10th. Again, it was 6 minus negative 4, which is why it ends up turning to be plus. You always subtract the bottom no matter what sign it has. All right, so number 5. We want to do that exponent out there first, but is it going to go to both top and bottom? No, it's just going to go to the top. So 6 squared would give us 36. And then multiply those exponent on my x's, I get x to the fourth. And then it's still divided by my 3x cubed. So now 36 divided by 3. And then 4 minus 3 gives us x to the first. So we just get 12x as our final answer. And then our last one on the front, we've got to multiply the stuff in the numerator first, get it to be just one term, and then do our division. So 2 times 8 would give us 16. And then we're multiplying those x's, so what do I do with my 3 and my 5? add them. So we get x to the 8 over 4x to the 6th. So now we use our division rules. 16 divided by 4. And then 8 minus 6 gives us x squared. So 4x squared is our final answer. So then number seven, our base this time is the two, so that's going to stay as a two. And then six minus three gives us an exponent of three. Which, what is two cubed? Eight. Then number eight, again, we have some exponents on the outside of those parentheses to take care of. So. 4 to the 4th power, what does that give us? Really? Yeah. Hmm, I thought it was 216. <coughs> and then x to the what power? 8. You multiply those ones. It's exponent to an exponent. We multiply there. And then in our denominator, we're going to have 4 squared. So that gives us 16. And then x to the... So now we can do our division. 256 divided by 16. 16 and then x to the second. So 16x squared. Final answer. So those were dividing monomial by monomial. So one term divided by one term. Sometimes you can divide polynomials by monomials. So you can have a trinomial up there, you can have a binomial up there. The division rules are still the same. You're still going to divide any coefficient, subtract your exponents. The only thing is you want to divide each term of the polynomial by that monomial. So I like to line 
it up underneath each one of them so I remember to divide each one of them. So then for our first term, 8 divided by 2 gives me 4. 3 minus 1 gives me x squared. So 4x squared is our new first term. Plus 4 divided by 2 gives me 2. 2 minus 1 would give me x to the first. And then minus 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. x to the first divided by x to the first cancels itself out. So that ends up being our final answer. So in the second one, again, you have to remember to divide each of them by the 6y squared. So again, I like to line 6y squared underneath each term from the numerator. I kind of scribble out the one in the middle so I don't confuse myself. So then 18 divided by 6 gives me 3. 5 minus 2 <coughs> gives me y to the third. And then what would our last term be? That 12y cubed divided by 6y squared. 2y. And that's our final answer. You started with two terms. You should end with two terms. Like the first one, we started with three terms up top. So we had three terms in our answer. You always got to make sure you have the same number of terms as what you started with. All right, third one. Again, I'm going to line up that A underneath both those terms there. So the A is going to cancel with the first one, and we're left with just the B. And then the A's cancel again, we're left with just C. So B plus C would be our final answer for that one. So at number four, again, let's line up our 4xy under all three of our terms there. So then we'll start with this first one, 16 divided by 4. Gives us a 4. 3 minus 1 gives us x squared. y to the first divided by y to the first means that y is gone. So 4x squared is our first term. Minus 12 divided by 4 gives us 3. x squared divided by x to the first would just be x y squared divided by y to the first would just be y. So we got minus 3xy as our second term. And then 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. This time our x's cancel. And then 3 minus 1 gives us y squared. So plus 1y squared. Or you could just write it as y squared. You don't have to have the 1 there. Number five, again, I'm going to line up my negative 2y underneath all three of my terms. So then 16 divided by negative 2, negative 8. y would be 3 minus 1 squared, negative 8y squared. 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. y squared divided by y to the first would just be y to the first. 2 divided by negative 2 would be negative 1. The y's cancel. So in this example, you do have to write the 1 because you've got to have that third placeholder there. We started with a trinomial, 1, 2, 3 terms. You've got to end with 3 terms. And then our last one there, they told us to take h of x, divide it by k of x. So my h of x is my trinomial up there. So 25x cubed minus 15x squared plus 5x. And then we're going to divide each term by 5x. By lying 5x under all three of them. 25 divided by 5 gives us 5. And then we got x squared. Minus 15 divided by 5 gives me 3. And I want to be x to the first because 2 minus 1 gives us 1. 
And then 5x divided by 5x would just be 1. And again, you have to have the plus 1 there. You started with a trinomial, you have to have a trinomial in the end.